MG are back, but not in the way that you think. Instead of making sports cars which are reliable and fun to drive, they've, they've gone into the sector of small cars and big cars. So this is the 2017 MG GS. It's powered by a 1.5 uh, turbo four pot and is an economical runaround which has a cheap insurance bracket and cheap to buy with prices starting around fifteen thousand pounds for a base spec model the gig test my ever essential test which combines load economy comfort reliability let's see how this does taking me all the way to gloucestershire on a very hot english summer day which is probably not hot in comparison to the rest of the world let's go with easy to use cruise control, it means that long journeys are blissful. Comfortable seats and a reasonable ride quality meant that at no point did I feel tired or worn out from the driving and that at all times I could always see around me and the interior sound was never too loud. It was always a reasonable sound level. Back roads were always a bit of fun with the kind of sporty handling that you get and acceleration never left you wanting any more. Loading in was easy as pie. With a higher load height, it meant that getting equipment out, I didn't have to stretch or lift up. It just came straight out, straight onto the stage. Business-wise, MG are growing quite well. Last year, they saw around four and a half thousand uh, new models registered on the road, which is between their MG3 and their MG GS. And later this year, the MG XS will be released, and that's the, the middle point. It's in between a small car and a big car. At 15,000 pounds-ish for a base spec model, you don't get leather everywhere. You do get quite a lot of plastic, but it's not bad plastic. It's the kind of plastic that you would have seen in high-end cars in around about 2004. With the GS being assembled in China, the build quality is actually quite good and the electrics on board are very reliable. The MG3 is built in Birmingham at their factory still. So the GS is modern, sporty and quite stylish. It actually looks quite good. Initially I was a bit like, eh, what is this? And then I adjusted to how it looked and it is not an ugly car by any means. The performance isn't bad. While you won't be seeing any sub 5 second 0 to 60 times, the 1.5 litre engine does put out a respectable 166 PS with a top speed of 180 miles per hour, insurance group 16E and a potential combined fuel economy of 46 miles per gallon. The gear test is standard for me, but this time it might be quite surprising. The reason being that while it is quite a big car, the boot isn't giant. There is wheel ingress, there is a higher load height, but let's see just how much I can fit in. Sadly, as sort of expected, I wouldn't actually be able to fit the base in the back. Now, it would have been more expected in a smaller car, an A-Class for instance, to not be able to fit the base in the back. But it's not the end of the world. The load height wasn't horrific. It's livable and it's a decent size. It would definitely take your weekly shot. So, as an all-rounder, the car did really well, especially when it came to parking. My only real issue came at that while this is a SUV, it wasn't remarkable off-road. The ground clearance isn't as good as you think it is with some of the lower swing bars being very, very low to the ground. But as a whole, this is very good and it's, it's extremely competitive. It's over 4,000 pounds cheaper than the nearest comparison cash car. While it, I'm sad we don't have their heritage and we don't have their fantastic sports cars of the 60s and 70s. This is a, a brand that has been around since 1924 and I really hope they do stick around. The XS will be a, a good idea of what's to come next because this is taking lessons they've learned from building the MG3 and what their customers are saying about the GS and compiling it together into one super giant mini.